Mickey Eubanks travels the world over to study fire ants. But it is on this lake that he leads his daily research on the surprising capacity of adaptation of this uncommon insect. Oh, I see fire ants climbing up this dead tree. That might mean there's a raft that has touched the tree, and now they're coming off the water. The raft is constructed in a few minutes. It floats because fire ants are hydrophobic. The chitin, which envelops the ant's body and protects it, is waterproof. The water ripples against the surface without entering the body. It's made up of thousands of fire ant workers. Um, many, thousands of them are forming the basal layer that's on top of the water. And then on top of that layer will be hundreds or thousands of additional fire ants. Many of them will be carrying the larvae or the babies of the colony. They use those strong mandibles, their strong legs, to really hold on to each other. When Mickey lightly pushes down on the raft, it doesn't sink. The very high density of the ants linked together ensures its cohesion. As such, a colony can float hundreds of kilometers on any type of water. No matter how long you study these fire ants, they never cease to amaze you, and they're just so impressive. And then you can see some of the larvae, though, unfortunately for them, get used as sort of like life rafts. So this raft will stay together until they, it um, touches some emergent aquatic vegetation or something like this dead tree that, that we see here. And as soon as the raft comes in contact with the dead wood or the vegetation, um, the, the workers are just going to start scrambling up out of the water. And many of them, again, will be taking these larvae or the babies of the colony up the vegetation or up this dead tree to escape uh, from drowning. That's their priority at this point, is to save the babies um, from drowning. Very efficient, very effective. Whoop, whoop. We don't want to get too close to the tree, or they'll start coming in the kayak. If the raft drifts for too long, the workers are forced to eat some of the larvae and eggs to avoid starvation. When the raft lands, the ants get off and find their way to dry land. The colony is safe. Fire ants, who have avoided drowning and survived famine, now look for new territory. Well adapted to the hazards of the humid tropical forest, fire ants are intrepid voyagers. They can climb mountains, cross rivers, and bypass deserts. Urban zones don't phase them either. On the contrary, if the fire ants discover a sizable piece of land, they won't hesitate to call downtown home. Walter Schinkel is the world expert on fire ants. His book, The Fire Ants, published in 2006, is the Bible for all those who work in the field. I don't like the word invasive because it's a metaphor of war. My interest is not in fire ant eradication or control or anything like that. It's basic biology of ants. The, the main thing that is specialized about fire ants is its large colony size. We live in a hot climate and the ants cannot travel the, those distances above ground. 
So they have evolved um, an underground foraging tunnel system. It's just a series of tunnels like rivers coming out from the mound that give them access to all parts of the territory. Digging a tunnel in clay, sand, or pebbles requires adapted tools and technologies. What Walter Schinkel studies, life-sized, is the fire ant's behavior in man-modified terrain. We have plots here, they're all 10 square meters. We've either uh, tilled the soil, which is a disturbance, obviously. We've shaded them. Fire ants are reputed not to like shade, right? We get decent survival of newly mated queens in, pl in plots that have been tilled. Then we know that tilling favors their survival. If we get poor survival in untreated plots, then we know there's something there that doesn't favor their survival. The looser the earth, the easier it is to dig. The workers spin a network of galleries, some of which dip all the way down to the water table, the layer of soil that is saturated with water. The workers never stop digging. They are constantly opening new tunnels, connecting them and adapting them to climatic conditions. In warm seasons, the galleries provide protection from drought. In the winter, they provide warmth. Fire ants do not hibernate. They can withstand cold temperatures down to 10 degrees below zero degrees Celsius. The nest is a veritable underground empire, home to up to a quarter of a million individuals. The fire ant is an ecological specialist that exploits disturbed habitat. Now, in its home in South America, that, disturb that disturbance was largely natural. But uh, with the advent of humans and with the transport to North America, then, of course, most of the disturbed habitat is human-caused. So we clear land, we clear the natural forest uh, that would cover the southeastern U.S. Uh, for agriculture, for building houses, for businesses, roadsides, parks. So once the ant arrived in the United States, it found itself in uh, fundamentally in paradise because here was this vast amount of disturbed habitat 